Hello, greetings to all my percussion friends out there. Uh, some of you may be wondering who I am and why I have a mallet pad with Beetle Percussion. So I'm here uh, making this video for you to cover a lot of questions and topics to help you learn more about this new product. My name is Matthew Coley and I'm a full-time marimba performer. Uh, before, uh, before this, I was a professor at a university. I taught at Iowa State University and I uh, left that job to pursue other projects of performing, composing, and directing the Heartland Marimba Festival. Uh, so while you're online checking out beetlepercussion.com, go on over to heartlandmarimbafestival.com as well. Okay, so last year was a great year for me as a performer. I had a lot of fun traveling, playing concerts. I got to go to Dallas, uh, Germany, Switzerland, New York City, a few times in San Diego. And during all of these travels, I really wished I had some way to practice while I was stuck, say, in a hotel room or waiting backstage to perform, just someplace to warm up and get, get my hands moving and get ready. So uh, this idea started and I got together with Beetle Percussion and we began creating this new product. And from there, it just got bigger and bigger. And so we're gonna talk about it today and answer some of your questions. So keep watching. Okay, I wanna talk a little bit more about the history of the idea for the pads and why they're so great for many performers. So like I said, originally the idea came to me when I was Kind of hanging out backstage waiting to perform and really wanted something to warm up on to get my hands warm to get the blood flowing uh, and so from there the original surface the softer foam was our first choice and it's a softer sound and it can be used in a place where you need to be quieter uh, when you practice uh, and after that we started to, uh, to experiment a little more and we discovered that there are going to be many, many uses for these practice pads. So we developed other surfaces, which I'll talk a little bit more about later in this video. And we realized how many wonderful uses there are for the mallet pad. Uh, and if you're like me, when I was in school, I couldn't afford a marimba or a xylophone. So this is a great way to have a tool at your home for practicing those extra hours, extra minutes, on technique, memorization, learning notes, accuracy, interval control, one-handed rolls. Uh, so we realized that you know the number of things that these can benefit for individual practice. Also, there are many, many things that can benefit in ensemble practice. So if you teach at a school, the percussion ensemble could really uh, utilize these for working on cleanliness and accuracy and time and the front ensemble or your indoor drum line especially if you have non-percussionists in the group and there's a lot of technique that needs to be worked on so those are some of our ideas for the mallet pads and keep watching to learn more about them okay I'm going to talk a little bit now about how it can be really important to practice on something without tone or pitch. And I know this is, this is a difficult topic because we've had a lot of questions about how it can be beneficial if this pad for marimba and xylophone has no tone. Uh, so one of the main things here is that we're not trying to replace practicing on an actual instrument. That is very important should always try to practice on an actual marimba or xylophone as much as possible. We're just trying to give you another tool to be able to become the best musician you can and utilize your time well. So when you have those moments of downtime in your apartment or you can't get a practice room at school, then the pad is there for you to work on some other uh, aspects of playing. So, uh, another another interesting comparison here is that in drum corps, you know the snare. Uh, a lot of times the pits will put blankets over the keyboards just to give you a sense of very sharp attack and to work work on muscle de muscle development, uh, 
uh, where there's no rebound. Uh, so this is a very similar idea. Also, if you guys might know who Mark Ford is, well-known name in our industry, and he talks a lot in his book about playing floor exercises, so sitting in front of the couch and practicing technique on the floor. So this is a, another similar comparison, but this time you have targets that represent the notes, and you can practice more on the actual size of interval or accuracy. So first thing, of course, is isolating technique, and technique is very important to being an accomplished player. Your technique has to be very solid to be able to do any of the musical ideas that you might have or that the composer has. So by practicing on the pads, you can zero in on aspects of technique. So double verticals, or single alternating, single independence, independent rolls. So all of these things are, are become front and center because you're, you don't have pitch or tone, so you're really working on technique. And of course, playing with good rebound stroke is important technique, and that is something else you can develop here with the pads. Uh, another thing is accuracy and muscle memory, or kinetic memory, for intervals. So practicing your intervals uh, is really important when learning the marimba. You want to have a second nature sense for the size of an interval. So if I want an octave, I know to go this big, and there's my octave. And then I can play scales and octaves or melodies uh, or any kind of transcription that might require octaves. So interval practice, uh, especially you know those nasty small intervals. When we have left hand small interval complicated rhythms. You know, if you have a pad, you can work on this away from the instrument, and so it gives you more options for getting better. Uh, and then another reason that these are great is that when we take away the tone, you really focus on the attack and the time. And so whether it's solo playing or in an ensemble, that can be that is extremely important. The time has to be very clear and clean and so that the ensemble is together or that the music sounds in the right style. And so by taking the tone away, you're focusing on these certain aspects more clearly. Okay, another question we've had is about the graduation of the bars. The pads are graduating. Each octave is a different size. And that was our solution for all the variants of marimba size marimba bars uh, in the industry. So I looked at several companies, measured marimba bars and where they changed sizes. And we came up with our system to, to kind of have an average uh, of that. So as I said, each octave is different. They gradually get larger as they go lower. And you can see this is our fifth pad. This is the highest pad and the smallest bar here. And that goes down to number one pad, which has the widest bar. The distance between the bars are all the same, and they're a half an inch, and that's uh, standard for most of the marimba companies. But if you look at, say, a marimba one keyboard, you'll notice that the change in graduation of the bars happens ir in an irregular way. So in the lower end, it happens more frequently, about every fifth or sixth bar. In the upper end, it happens about every ninth or tenth bar. So this was our fix for that. Uh, you know, we tried to come up with a system that would work for as many players as we could. During the development of the pad, we realized that these are going to be really great for percussion ensembles and front ensembles. So if you're a director of one of those kinds of groups, uh, we feel like these are going to be a great tool, especially if your group involves non-percussionists and percussionists. So as I mentioned in another segment of this video, we take away the tone and the pitch, and you can really focus on technique uh, and 
time, cleanliness, attack, velocity, those, those things. And you're able to give the students the um, freedom of not having to worry so much about playing the right pitches. And then they can really work on cleaning up their uh, technique and their time and playing together in an ensemble. So when, and one thing we also realize is that a lot of drum corps will throw blankets over the marimbas for this same reason. And this is a, a similar concept that the pads will provide. Uh, and if you guys are familiar with Mark Ford, he's a well-known marimba player and teacher in our world. He is a big advocate of floor practice. In his method book, he talks about sitting uh, up against a wall and working on technique on the floor. So these are this is a similar concept, and now you have mallet pads that provide you with targets to represent the pitches, and you can get all that work done in the same way. We have three surfaces that you can choose from for the mallet pads. The first surface that we utilized in the design was a softer foam rubber, and we did that so that there would be a surface that was softer and sound for the player. Uh, it also turns out that it gives a nice rebound, so it's a little less strenuous on the hands, uh, but it's great for if you're warming up backstage or practicing at home, if, if you need to be uh, in a, an environment where you need to be softer. The second surface we have is the recycled car tire rubber. And this surface is great for high impact playing. So for ensembles, front ensembles, and push ensembles, this will be a great, uh, great surface for that. It'll take a lot of beating. And um, another great thing about it is that it doesn't give as much rebound. So it makes the players work harder and build more strength in their technique. Okay, and the third surface that we offer is the Beetle Kill Ash Tree Keys, and these are the most closely related to the feel that you'll get on the marimba or as I and they, they have the sharpest tone as well, so they're uh, really great if you're looking for a surface uh, to work on cleanliness of ensemble and rhythm and time. I would like to talk a little bit now about playing spot on the pads. Uh, this is a tricky topic, as you notice, the pads are not graduated in terms of length of the bar, like a marimba or a xylophone. They're only graduated in the width. Uh, but we had to make some compromises for weight and portability. We wanted this to be something that wasn't too difficult to travel around with uh, for practicing in a lot of places. Uh, so what I found is that you should play in the center of all of the bars so that you're learning a muscle memory with hand and eye coordination. For whenever you see that shape, uh, you're going to always go for the center or slightly off center if you're working on a different tone color. Uh, so this, this practice, it'll become clear. Uh, it takes a, like a long, little bit to get used to, but it uh, becomes comfortable very quickly. And um, practicing just playing in the center of any size of bar will help you all across your playing and tone production. Another uh, issue along these lines is the distance between intervals. Uh, it's going to be very different if you have one mallet on one manual and the other one on the lower manual in one hand. So, for example, a D to an F sharp in the lower octave is going to be slightly smaller 
if you're trying to play in the centers of the bars. But we understand that, and again, this uh, was an issue that we had to uh, compromise because of the weight and portability of the pads. Also, I just want to make sure that you're practicing equally playing on the edge of the sharps and flats just as much as you're playing in the center. So most of my playing in solo music, uh, I'm using the edges of the sharps and flats. It's more rare that I'll be going all the way to the center unless it's happening with both mallets in one hand. If one mallet is going to the upper manual, usually I'm going to be playing on the edge unless the music's slower and I have more, a little more time to think about the placement. Since all of the pads were designed to be a major seven, so we could fit them together to create a five octave, up to a five octave marimba or a four octave xylophone, we had to figure out a way to make it a true five octave instrument, a complete C scale. So we designed the extra C bar, and that is included with all of the pad four and five, the highest two pads. As you can see here, they're detachable and they will attach in the future with magnets so that they're stable because it's a lighter bar. We wanted the mallet pads to be able to fit in a mallet bag so they're easily portable. So you can get two mallet pads easily into the front pocket of a mallet bag. Uh, you just flip the second pad over opposite from the other pad and they fit nicely together. And then you can slide it right into the mallet bag and off you go to your gig or rehearsal. The mallet pads were designed to be both for marimba and xylophone play. So the combinations are a little different if you're interested in uh, making a practice pad for your xylophone playing. And so this will be great if you're um, an orchestral percussionist and you're interested in taking auditions and you need a lot of repetition on excerpts. Or if you're a beginning percussionist and you want to just learn some basics and scales and techniques. So uh, if you're going to buy a xylophone combination, you can do a three octave xylophone by buying pad two, one of pad two, and then buy two of pad five. So you get this, you get two of the smallest pad. And then if you want to make it a four octave xylophone, just add another pad five. So you can see here I have a four octave xylophone and my xylophone sticks. We also designed a multi-purpose bass and line pad for the mallet pad system. So as you can see here, the board under the mallet pad is, can serve as a line pad for eight, up to eight snare drummers. And, but what's great about this is it it's, works perfectly for classroom situations. You can have a couple of students playing on the mallet pad, playing, working on the xylophone and bell parts while you have some other students working on a snare part. Thanks for watching our video and we hope we answered many of your questions. Uh, feel free to visit the Beatle website and send us an email if you have more questions. Uh, and remember, by supporting Beatle Percussion, you are effectively helping to change the world by supporting the company. You are supporting the people who make and design all of their products. These are truly handcrafted products and their mission is very eco-minded and by supporting the company you are helping to save the environment. Uh, you are helping to recycle car tire rubber and 
reuse beetle kill pine and ash. Thanks again. I'm Matthew Coley, and we hope you check out the mallet pad system by Beetle Production. Mm -hmm.